one and welcome back to the iwar network tubecast i'm your host juan cena the nwl and iwl commissioner and with me as always is matt riley i did i matt i'm fantastic fantastic indeed <laughs> so guys this episode will be our draft Recap special. Now, we recently had the IWAR draft. It's become a yearly or annual tradition for the IWAR. And I have to be honest, you know, we have a lot of cool events. You know, we have the Murano, we have the Johnny B Cup, we have the Triple D. We just, we're just coming out of war games. But I think the draft is the most exciting event that the IWAR has to offer. Now, Matt, when we, uh, when we came up with the idea last year, I forget the genesis of this actual idea. I think we were just uh, BSing around. For those of you who don't know, that uh, me, and, me and Matt the talk on Skype uh, regularly uh, just to kind of pitch ideas back and forth and kind of spitball. And uh, one of these uh, brainstorming sessions, uh, we came up with the concept of the IWAR draft. I think the WWE draft had just concluded and we were kind of, you know, talking in circles about it. And then it actually became a reality, which nine out of ten ideas do not become a reality. But this is the yeah. one that actually did. So you remember back then, Matt, what we were discussing in terms of the draft? Yeah, I think we just kind of talked about, you know, a way to disperse the talent in an exciting way. And that if people agreed to, you know, kind of forgo their choice of where to go and they go into the league they're drafted in. But also, we came up with the idea that it wouldn't be like a permanent thing. That way, if you hated it there, you're only there six cycles. Yeah. You know, there is yeah, a contest. There is a contest attached to this, and I guess you would call it a redistribution of wealth for all your socialists out there. But uh, it is very exciting nonetheless. So this year's draft, just like last year's draft, had a lot of twists and turns and swerves all over the place. So I guess we'll go through uh, each draft E, I guess in order, and uh, we'll talk about uh, what our mindsets were. Why did we, ch you know, choose this person and not this person, and kind of get an overall understanding of you know what we were thinking at the time. So the honor of the very first pick in the draft went to the CWL, and they went with who, Matt? They went with Ricky Kyle. Now, isn't he currently the reigning and defending Iowa champion? Is that, is that correct? It is. He just defeated Lord Drama in his most recent defense. Yeah. So, Ricky Kyle is the current reigning and defending Iowa champion. Again, a very solid pickup. Um, I think he was number one on just about everyone's board. He was number one on mine. And, you know, I didn't think he was going to fall to uh, <laughs> what number five to me. So, I'm glad that the CWL picked him up. So, a, a great talent there. Next up, we had the BRL, who drafted Tiamat. So, Matt, what were you thinking when you drafted Tiamat? Well, my thoughts on taking Tiamat, second pick, a female wrestler, was that the BRL has the double X division, and it was a way to bring somebody new into the division that would uh, that had you know good trash talk and a solid character. And I think that the first pick was like, oh, wow, first pick was a woman, you know, kind of mix it up, you know? Yeah. And uh, I think it hopefully will work out well. Yeah, again, we are adding more and more female wrestlers to the BRO roster to kind of solidify that women's division, which is already really great. Uh, who had the next pick in the draft, Matt? That was the Von Schnapps going to the CWL who uh, had their pick. Traded. Now, keep in mind, the second pick overall was actually the IWL, but I traded that. Uh, I'm sorry, that was uh, last year that was traded to the BRL for Santa Lucha. Mm. So then the actual BRL pick was traded to CWL as part of a package deal that will bring Koenig and the Great David to the BRL. So the third pick was actually the BRLs, but it went to CWL, so they took the Von Schnapps. So they actually have had quite a history in the CWL, so they'll be returning home. Uh, so we'll they were how. extremely successful in the CWL, and they're kind of looking to recapture uh, that magic. You know, not for nothing, they do they did do extremely well in the IWL while they were there. They weren't there for very long. I think we got Alec first due to last year's draft. 
Um, yes. We picked up the restaurant stops uh, throughout the year. But they did they did pretty well in the IWL. They're looking to kind of recapture you know their top spot in the, in the CWL. So, again, another great pickup and a quantity pickup. So there was obviously more than one. How many restaurant stops are there in total uh, minus Ava? Uh, there are technically five. Mm-hmm. There's Victor, the father, then his sons, Alex, Axel, Alec, and Otto is somewhere out there. Uh, he was kind of like a Braun Strowman type. He nice. was in the PP, you know, PKL with them, but I never brought him back, really. Okay. And, yeah, so. Again, a magnificent pickup by the CWL. Uh, who was next in the draft? That went to round two. That was the BRL. It was a snake draft, so... They took the double pick uh, or two-person pick of Strict Lee Bidness and Cara Bidness from the IWL. From so the that... world-famous Bidness wrestling family. That's right. So you have recent Metropolitan champion Strict Lee Bidness and his – is it sister? I believe it's sister. Sister. I don't know. They kiss a lot, so I hope not. Um, <laughs> so Cara Bidness, again, a female wrestler to help bolster – the BRL's double X division for women's wrestling. So uh, that'll hopefully really add two new sparks to that division and they'll run with it. You know, I heard there was another business uh, sister out there, Ada Business. Yeah. Uh, full name going, Ada Business. Oh, uh, oh, oh, bad joke. Good pun, though. Yes. Again, a magnificent pickup from the BRL. Again, they're going to add an additional uh, female to their roster to kind of shore up their uh, women's division and then strictly business is a world-class uh re- world-class wrestler and i think he'll do extremely well in the brl all right so matt who was next the next pick was the adam Hill's first pick in the draft and they took the blanks which was blank big blanks one two three four and the contract of norman spivey so all of them in one big group going to the iwl Again, for me, when I'm choosing the blanks, again, I was there at the beginning, so I saw them involved in the NWL. I understand how good they are. It was a two-fold approach on this. Number one, the IWL does you know, have a set of blanks. I wanted to keep those because that was super important to me. And then add additional blanks and Norman Spivey because keep in mind, guys, that I just lost Devon Schnapps, I lost David, and I lost Koenig. It was important to get not only quality but quantity with this pick. And I think I think they're going to do extremely well. They're going to run roughshod over the IWL. So, Matt, who do we have next? Next up, we had the pick was the <laughs> CWL, and they took, I'm not going to pronounce it right, Luburius Lauren Ordure. Laborious apparently means sad because I had to look it up because I'm not a walking thesaurus. So he's a he's a new wrestler, is that correct? He was just created for the draft. Right. Which, just in future reference, anyone listening right now going, oh, I would have liked to have done that. You don't have to have an existing wrestler. We had about five wrestlers that were new that people said, you know, I want to make a wrestler up, just so them get drafted, and they'll send him in there for January. Mm. So... And there it is. Again, we don't know a whole lot about this uh, this wrestler, but we do know who managed them, and he is extremely good. So, yeah. again, a another um, great pickup for the CWL. So, Matt, who was next? Next up was the shocking pick of the draft. And that shocking pick was uh, by the CWL in round three, and it was... Mr. Magnificent, Jamie Montgomery. Holy shit. Yeah. How is this yeah. even possible? Because not well, to nothing, if I knew he was available, I would have drafted him myself. Well, it brings up an interesting point because this was sort of a left field, not a hoodwink, but a, a clever maneuver. A couple things happened. One was Andy, uh, the commissioner of the CWL, worked the phone, so to speak, and got Jamie to agree and come over. So... He got that going, and, and that's a big step for him. But it brings to the point, you know, here's a guy from an outside the league with a huge reputation, Idaway legend-type figure, LWL. I think he's a 9- or 10-time champion now there. He has the record. I remember when he was stuck on five forever. <laughs> Jamie Montgomery brings a lot of prestige to the CWL, so that's going to be a really interesting prospect. And 
I know Jamie, who runs him, hates, hates, hates the Gold Federation as much as I hate, hate, hate the Jade Federation. So it'll be a challenge for him going into this competitively. But so, a, a very... so, Jamie, whatever Andy is paying you, I was willing to pay you double. So just keep that <laughs> in mind. CWL and their freaking swerves, man. Mm. They do this every year, meaning last year. <laughs> yeah. The next pick was the IWL who took from the 2XW the Jester. I really like the Jester. I really like 2XW. The one thing I think we're missing in the IWL is uh, a more hardcore presence, someone who's going to you know, use a staple gun and a barbed wire baseball bat and you know, set a table on fire. And we don't really have someone who's like that. We have more traditional wrestlers. To a certain degree in, in the IWL, there, there are some uh, some wacky guys over there, but not to that extreme. See what I did there? I know you did. Nice. Okay. So we, we definitely picked <laughs> up the Jester. I'm super excited to bring him in, and I'm looking forward to what he's going to be able to do moving forward. The next pick was by the BRL. They took a tag team, Xander and Zemus. Um, or Tomat and Zamat, as I call them. Yes, Tomax and Zamat, the old G.I. Joe Twins. They don't get uh, that reference. They're too young. I had to throw it out there. Yeah, reference, kids. Google. Google it. So, you know, BRL is a tag team league. And now that I had kind of fortified the women's division with some wrestlers, because just, just to give you an idea, the women's division recently had a turnover of about four wrestlers that came in and already are gone. So we wanted to really kind of shore that up. So got that done. Next is, is a tag team league, really known for tag teams. Shored that up. The next round was round four. And the BRL traded, we made the trade to get Koenig and the great David from the IWL to come over to the BRL. Uh, we sent them the number one and number four pick. So the fourth pick uh, was actually the round, fourth round pick that ended up being the CWLs. And the CWL picked exciting new rookie, new wrestler, Dixon Ticonderoga. Dixon Ticonderoga, fiery rookie. I love this gimmick. He dressed... He dresses in yellow and green tights. He has black boots, like charcoal black boots. Then he has yellow tights with green stripes. And he has flaming red hair. And uh, he likes to say, erase the hate. You know, he goes to public schools. I, I've heard how this character or this wrestler is going to be gimmicked. And it's just awesome. It's so old school. So I'm looking forward to seeing it. I love it. I think it's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, the next pick. Round four was the Harbingers going to the IWL. Explain yourself, sir. Oh, I will. Now, I don't know a whole lot about the Harbingers, but they were able to put together some TT, especially for the draft. And then after reading that TT, I knew that I needed to have these guys in. So, again, it's, a, it's another group pick for me to replenish you know, my stock because I did lose a, a couple of guys. But I'm sure. very intrigued by this, and I think they're going to do. I think they're going to be massively successful in the IWL. Uh, next up was CWL that took. I hope we pronounce it right. Dragon and Terry and Tierra and Terry. How would you say that? And Terry. And okay, nice. All right, so uh, Andy going a singles wrestler, another young wrestler on the on the, on the come, as they say. Ooh. Uh, just a. Uh, high flying, energetic wrestler. A lot of lot of singles talent, you know, going to CWL. So a lot of singles wrestlers, which would be good. I think it's going to really pump the division up. Oh, I definitely agree. Again, a fantastic pickup. I was actually eyeing him for my very next pick. Oh. Uh. So the next pick is round five. First pick in round five. The CWL took longtime fan favorite, veteran Scotty Flash. Scotty Flash is awesome. He is Luther Alexander's longtime nemesis. Uh, his foil, so to speak. His straight man. Uh, yes. He's the antithesis of. And they've been feuding for, I would say, four years? Approximately? Um, trading wins back and forth. So seeing uh, Scotty Flash, you know, he can definitely uh, step in and challenge Ricky Kyle for the top babyface spot in the CWL. Who's next? Well, next was the IWL, who selected Johnny Pronto. Johnny Pronto was interesting to me because, again, it, it's a new new wrestler, so he'd be essentially a rookie entering into the IWL, which you know can be a, a bit of a, a Shark Tank environment. 
And so I'm curious if this young man will go to be able to step up to the challenge or will he get eaten alive? Or yeah, dead? I like I like his background. He's a uh he was the champion of Puerto Rico, but uh the damage from the hurricane basically put the promotion out of business. So he's coming out of well, so let's see what he can do. And we had to let him know by carrier pigeon because the phones in Puerto Rico weren't working. That's right. So we had this, you know, carrier pigeon, but he's coming. He's yeah, coming. Fun, fun, fun fact, yeah. I, had a, I had a customer today who was going to Puerto Rico for Thanksgiving. And I stopped and was like, really? He's like, he's like, yeah, yeah, my parents are down there. And he was telling me all the devastation down there still, still. Ugh. It took so, me a, a long time to clean that up. Johnny Pronto is trying to win money for his home country, so let's, let's root for Johnny Pronto. And a, and a side note, my brother wears Puerto Rican flag Converse's. Really? Yeah. Nice. There you go. I'm not really sure why, but he does. That. He ha- he owns a pair and he wears them on occasion. Special Good. occasions like weddings. Um, yeah, quinceañeras, weddings, um, nice. Puerto Rican Day Parade. Why are you not wearing the ribbon? Uh, it's weird. Round five concluded with. A pick for the BRL, another another duo, Jalo Marksmith and 16. So uh, exciting young talent coming into the BRL. So we'll see these two new tag teams, how they pan out. Maybe they'll work off each other. Who knows? But uh, exciting young talent, that's what it helps. The BRL always needs new blood. I'm curious about 16, and here's why. I wonder if he's going to write out the word 16, or is he going to be the number 16? Because I can see a... You know, there are some dummies out there, guys, let's be honest. That they're gonna you know, they're gonna see sixteen and they put sixteen on, on their on their sheet and yep. mess that up. So uh, I'm just curious about number one, uh, the rules and regulations regarding the IWA in terms of numbered wrestlers, that their name is just a number. And I wonder if he's just gonna spell it out, which probably would be a lot easier for everyone. Yeah. Right. Round six, the final round, led off with the BRL selecting Farragus Brennan, so one half of the uh, tag team with Goliath O'Brien has gone his separate ways, looking to make a name for himself uh, in a new league. So uh, BRL gains a tough singles wrestler, so we'll see how that goes. Do you know for the longest time I thought Farragus Brennan was like fungus? Brennan? Yeah, well, it pretty much is. Yeah, same thing. Is it? Yeah. No. <laughs> You're making that up. All right, maybe. So I always yeah. read it as fungus Brennan, and then I... I forget what I was doing. I was typing out his name. I'm like, oh, that's not fungus. That's weird. Yeah. Yeah. Good wrestler, though. Yeah. yeah. So then the next pick, the IWL took F.L. Slobberknocker. I mean, what, what can I say? Legend. Um, all-time great. Gonna bring no, bring no brainer there. there. There's, there's a no brainer there. I'm curious to see what's going to be brought to the table here uh, with him. And I think he has a good opportunity to really, really uh, knock some of these uh, youngsters, these youngster players that we have in the IWL, off their high horses. So There you go. Do it. I, I ride on a donkey, so my fall is not that great personally. So Nice. There you go. <laughs> the last, The last pick of the draft. The CWL went with another sneaky move, and they drafted – as a legacy pick, the Empire of Chaos, who are recently retired. So if they do come back to the IWA, they will come into the CWL. They need to bring back my dag, my damn tag team titles is what they need to do. Right. You know, the, the regulators are still the reigning and defending IWL tag team champions, and I I desperately want my belts back. So They're bums. They're so if you bums. can uh, FedEx that to me or if you want to send a UPS – I bet um, if you go to your local chap store, you'll find them there. Trying on chaps. Ask those chaps. Quick question. I have to ask this question. And this is off topic, but I don't care. It's, it's my show. Shawn Michaels. He wore chaps. Yeah. Right? Okay. But he had, like, shit on them, right? He had, like, mirrors on them. and Yeah. And he, had, he had crosses on them at one point. Uh, all right. I don't understand what the character of the Heartbreak Kid was. Because he wore chaps. He had the, he had the fingerless gloves for a while. Mm-hmm. He had the glasses with the, the sights on them. And then he had the what I consider a Kango-style hat, but it was leather? Yes. I don't know what that is. 
Like if yeah. he just des- if he described that in a few words, is he a rhinestone cowboy? Is that is that the appropriate term for that? It might could be. someone? Could some Kyle Queen? Can you let me know what a rhinestone cowboy is? He would know. He's from Texas. <laughs> Please let me know. He's I don't know dandy. what a is he a dandy? A dandy? No. Yeah, he's a dandies no. wear fancy assless chaps. I'm just saying. I thought that was mostly biker gangs who did that. Oh, maybe that too. Barry Windham wore them. And he looked like a man. Well, Barry was a bulking dude. He yeah. also wore one black glove too, which is pretty sweet. Who doesn't like one black glove? I don't know, but I think I think if you're not over as a wrestler today. So if you're in any federation, would it be WWE, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Ring of Honor, PWG, Evolve, Wrestle Circus, MLW, the NWA, CMML, AAA, or what have you? If you're not over, there's two things you need to do. First and foremost, get one black glove. Second of all, come out of a box. Because if you come out of a box, you're instantly over. Hey, it's sound logic right there. Tell me, answer me this question, goddammit. From all the wrestlers that you've known who've come out of a box, which ones were not over? Because there is not a one that is not over. Sting. Think about it. Sting's over. <laughs> Sting's over. Terry Funk's over. Right? Yeah. Terry Funk Sting. came out of a box twice. Yeah. Terry uh-huh. Funk and my favorite come out of retirement angle with Flair. The one where we put the bag over his head? Yeah, that was a different. Were, that was a different. That was a different angle. That's the same angle, but different times. Yeah, different. Yeah, but that that night. Oh, you, know, you know, Mr. Flair, I sure would appreciate it. I mean, I'd love the chance to. Oh, you're an old man, Terry. You're done. <laughs> Power drives him through a table. You know, Terry Funk just was just coming out of uh, doing Over the Top. Nice. Which is an underrated film, and he was in Roadhouse, which is not an underrated film because it's glorious. Who doesn't like Roadhouse? Was the guy in Roadhouse the same guy that was in Mask? Not the Mask with Jim Carrey, the Mask with Rocky Dennison. Was it the same dude? Yeah, it's the same guy. Is it? Yeah. They're actually, that's a prequel. I believe it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if, if, if the Leatherman Frank Snow was a wrestler, he would be that guy, I think. Yeah, Sam... Uh, um, Sam Donaldson? Not no. Sam Shepard, no. Sam... Um, nah. Sammy Davis Jr.? No, Sam something. Sam, I Sam? am. Sam Leatherman. Well, so, we we had anyway. the we had, well, no we had the goddamn internet. Fuck this. I go look up Roadhouse. Roadhouse. I, I spelled Roadhouse wrong. He's also the voice of the Coors Light commercials. Is he? It's Coors Light. Sam Elliott was the name that you were looking for. There you go. Thank you. So if if Frank Leatherman Snow was a real wrestler, he'd be Sam Elliott. Not so much Patrick Swayze. There you go. All right, so what do we have next? Uh, well, that was the end of the draft. No, so it wasn't. Came... Yeah. No, we have one more pick. We do? CWL has one last pick. Uh... The, the reason why the draft was so successful and so exciting. The biggest swerve of them all. Oh right, I forgot. I'm sorry. How do you forget that? Oh, I'm so I was angry. so I was so surprised by the uh, move. Uh, yes, that's right. Because it was it was a stunning. It was a mystery wrestler. No one knew who he was. We just knew there was a wrestler that was entering, uh, and it was a mystery. And it ended up being you know a guy in a mask and a hood came out and unmasked, and it was the incomparable Luther Alexander. Now, for a little bit of backstory on this, ladies and gentlemen, Luther Alexander has been banned for life from the CWL for a whole bunch of nefarious deeds and acts. He was never allowed to enter the CWL. He was, um, he, on a couple of different occasions, made attempts to infiltrate the CWL, uh, unsuccessful, uh, to be honest. So for him, the only way he was able to go into the CWL and cause havoc and mischief was to be drafted as a unknown mass wrestler. So, ha! I got you. There it is. There it <laughs> is. In reality, you know, I'll break a little kayfabe here. I had no idea I was doing this up, up until, I think, was it the day before that I told you? Or was it the you day of like, the draft? Was it the day before? You, you, you told me to put a um, holder for you. Yeah. 
And uh, I was okay. And then you, like earlier, like, oh, it's a mystery wrestler. Yeah. Although I was thinking in a future draft, maybe we should have one wrestler out of the people that nominate, just put him as a mystery wrestler, and it'll always be like a surprise. Oh, yeah. There's a little fun twist for next year's draft. In my head, I was going to do this. So the mystery wrestler, if he was drafted to the BRL, would have been a new wrestler. If I would put in a position where I have to draft the mystery wrestler, he would have been a new wrestler. But in the back of my head, it's like, you know what, not for nothing, if he gets drafted to the CWL, I might as well have him be Luther Alexander because you can tell a hell of a fun story uh, with that. And it would have been the swerve of the night. But Andy ruined it because he got Jamie Montgomery. So he took my heat away. It makes me mad. So I guess I guess if we had to give him a if we had to give out draft grades, how do you okay. think each league did? Uh, well, let's see. I would say, let's let's hear the lineup for CWL, Ricky Kyle, Devon Schnapps, Luburius, Lauren Ordur, Mr. Magnificent and Jamie Montgomery, Dixon Ticonderoga, Scotty Flash. The mystery wrestler was Luther Alexander and the legacy pick of the Empire of Chaos. I would give them an A. Yeah. That was a that was a well crafted draft. Yeah. And the CWL going through some, you know, uh, roster changes needed that kind of pipeline. They, they, need, they definitely needed a boost because they had lost a lot of high profile wrestlers. They lost Rowdy and Rude. They lost Salas and all his minions. Uh, so um, they were hurting uh, for a squirting. I don't think I used that right, but that sounds I, good to who me. Who's hurting for squirting? Well, let's see. The BRL draft, Tiamat, Strictly Bidness, and Carabidness, Xander Zemus. Fourth pick was traded away. Angelo Marksmith in 16. And then, of course, uh, finishing up with Farragut Brennan. So I'd say they're probably a C plus. Well, you got to add David and, uh, and uh, Koenig. Oh, that. right. That's right. So I'll, I'll put traded slash... Um, yeah, Koenig and the radio. So I'd say that's probably a B. Yeah. And the IWL? Hmm. The IWL ended up like this. They had no first round pick, but they rebounded to take the blanks. And then Jester, the Jester, <laughs> the Harbingers, Johnny Pronto and F.L. Slobberknocker. I think in all fairness, you have to count, instead of not having a number one pick, you would count Senior Lucha as my number one pick. Yeah. I think that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Because then it looks, it looks, when you don't have that, I think it looks worse than it actually is. Yeah. So what would you give yourself as a grade? Um, I think I'd give myself, uh, like, a B minus. If Andy didn't draft so well, I probably would have had a, a, a higher. You know, a higher, a higher, a higher grade. I'm taking, I'm taking a couple of chances of guys that I don't know, you know, that I don't know a whole lot about. So obviously the jester, I don't know a whole lot about. So I'm taking a, a chance, but giving an opportunity in exchange for that chance. The Harbingers, I'm again, I'm taking a, a, a risk there as well. Again, I'm not necessarily familiar with them, um, but I was really excited about their TT. So I think that's a good overall pick. So I'd, I'd say a B minus. All right. Well, I will also say the questions people had found uh, funneled over to us. So one we answered already, somebody asked why did we draft Team at first in the BRL. They asked who runs Jane Red, which those of us who have playing for a long time know that the person behind Jane the Vixen Red is Catfish Rob. Who on a personal note is my all-time favorite manager of nice. all time. Recently joined the IWAR Network uh, Facebook page. And you should too if you're listening to this. Because if yeah. you're not there, then I don't know. I don't want to tell you. That was great. Yeah, you missed cool stuff like the draft. We had 11 new members uh, this week. So I always tell Matt this. Everyone comes out for the draft. That's right. I've seen guys who didn't post stuff in months come out for yep. the draft. Wearing lime green suits. <laughs> That's true. Uh, next question was, did anyone see the dude from the LWL coming? Uh, no. No. Nope. That's a shoot. That was a shoot. That was that was a shoot, baby. That was uh, out of the blue. No idea what was happening. And it's funny, too, because I almost wrote, reached out to Jamie. I asked him how much he hates gold. I was like, hey, man, you know, you should throw – because he was in the studio before with Spike Dillinger and a couple other guys. Mm. Um, so him to bring in his marquee name wrestler is really big. That's huge. That's big Matt, remember how much I was swearing? I, we were actually on Skype during the draft. <laughs> yes. And I just started swearing, and Matt was doing something else at the time. He's like, what, 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 what? I'm like, look at this. 
He's like, oh. <laughs> yeah. I was very upset. I'm still very upset. I'm uh, never going to so, let that go. Yeah, we'll get him back. Uh, so <laughs> so uh, one of the questions was, who do we expect to be the top three at the end of the contest? Now, to kind of give you an idea of what the contest is, you have six cycles for these wrestlers in their new leagues to earn money, stars, and out of way ranking points through their victories and so forth. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Teams that are that are grouped together, will mm-hmm. they be graded individually? Yes. Okay. But of course, if we think one team has just done the best of all week, it's a very subjective thing, so, you know. Uh, but the winner of the Iowa draft also receives a shot at the Revolution Championship. So, there's that out there. Named after Revolution Extreme, at least that's what Luther Alexander says. That's right. So, you know, the idea is six cycles. If you like the league, stay there. If you don't, you can transfer out. But, you know, this this draft gets people really excited, and we hope that they will um, get involved. When we have this draft next year, <laughs> uh, you know, in theory, if everything goes well, we'll have an even bigger draft. You know, someone asked me uh, offline, um, have we ever considered doing this twice a year? And I think if we did it more than once, it would lose kind of its luster and its appeal. Yeah, I just it's a lot of work on our end and yeah. it's it's fun, but like it's nice to be like once a year, set the date. And you know, one of those things that you know, every year people at last year last year like, I should have entered it, I should have entered it. Well you get it next year. Well we got a lot of late entries this year. I guess there was no yeah. it was weird. I don't know. People a lot of people were doing a lot of different things. We had pay per views going on at the same time too, so uh, uh, thank you for everyone who participated. And if I had to pick someone who's going to win it all in this time of this contest, oh, are we counting David and uh, and uh, and, and uh, uh, Koenig on this? Yes. Okay. So my pick would have to be the Great David on this. Um, okay. Because he's just cycle cycle in the cycle out. He's just way too consistent. I'm going to go with uh, my my pick for probably winning it all, Ricky Kyle. In the heart of a champion. Heart of a champion. And uh, my dark horse pick, Dixon Ticonderoga. He raised Rick, the eight. Ricky Kyle is still in that uh, in that best of '96 series. He's in with. Uh, yeah, Sir he's Doctor. tied up two, two, and one. Two, two, and one. Yeah. So the rookie, the rookie, the rookie, the rookie world champion is taking out quite possibly the best wrestler in the Iowa. I would consider Sir Gunter the best wrestler in the Iowa. Just coming off that win from War Games too. So. Yeah. So uh, it's it's uh you know Ricky Kyle also the oh well, well, he's taking on uh, Sinister Steve Stryker right now in his current defense yeah so big happens Oof. that's a rough go isn't it all right so that's that's the draft for this year so all right so so yeah. that's that's the draft for this year folks I hope everyone enjoyed it we did put a, quite a bit of work into this and I hope you guys come out for next year's draft sometime in November of 2018. So, again, if you're, if you're interested in the draft, uh, make sure that you're, you know, you make you guys available for the November date. Uh, in addition, now don't forget that you don't have to draft your wrestlers over until January. So if you want to finish up whatever feuds or pay-per-view matches that your guys are right. currently in, uh, please do so. But to be eligible for the contest, you must be in by January. If you're not in by January, you're not going to be involved in the contest. And that commissioner lost a draft pick, and he was probably <laughs> very upset. So right. just want to keep that in mind. All right, guys, so we are officially out of time. So for Matt Riley, I'm Juan Cena. Have a good night. <laughs>